We're trying to identify whether or not f, g, and h are linear, exponential, or power functions. So the first thing I look for is the linear function, or y equals mx plus b. So it's an equation of a line, which means it has um, you know, the same slope, or it's increasing or decreasing at the same rate the entire time. So I look for the uh, values in the table that are increasing or decreasing at the same rate. So what we're really looking for in terms of patterns is, is it increasing by the same amount uh, from, you know, cell to cell. So when we look at f, let's assume f is a linear function. So as x increases from 2 to 3, y increases from 4 to 8. So it's adding 4 in between. So if f were linear, then that means from here to here, 8 to 16, we would also be adding 4. But that's not the case because 8 plus 4 is 12. So um, just like that, we prove that f is not the linear function. But rather, when we look at option h from 6 to 10, that's plus 4. 10 to 14, plus 4. 14 to 18, plus 4. So you're adding the same amount every time. That's the big key with linear functions. Exponential is the next thing I look for. So let's use... Um, just use the R, a little red or maroon here. So exponential is similar to linear where um, instead of adding, we're looking for um, the same factor of multiplication between each number. So uh, when we go, when we look at F, we go from 4 to 8. So it's times 2. So assuming F is the exponential function, uh, we should be multiplying by 2 every time. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, it's looking good. 16 times 2 is 32. Okay, so just like that, we confirm that f must be our exponential function. So I'm going to write them right here. Linear was our h function, which only leaves g to be the power function. So let's talk about why g is the power function. Uh, let's switch it up. Do this weird green color here. So we're looking at g to be the power function. So a power function, again, is x to the a, or, you know, where a is some number. So we have in the table 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16, 5, 25. So naturally, you may start to see a pattern emerge, you know, 2, 4, 3, 6, uh, sorry, 3, 9, 4, 16, 5, 25. They're all squares of those numbers. So our function for g, oh, you know, I may as well use g of x. That would make a little bit more sense, huh? So we have x squared must be our function for g because 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. So um, with this in mind, that leaves us with option b. So b must be the correct answer.